uh, good morning good afternoon good evening uh, everyone who are joining from different locations around the world uh, so today uh, in this session i will discuss about art of digital innovation with apis and integrations my name is sanjay maguda i work as a software architect at wso2 so if i tell you a little bit about myself uh, currently i work as a product manager for wso2 api manager and in my role i primarily all uh, research and development side of wso2 api manager looking at new features uh, work closely with support and uh, sa teams and then give that feedback to my product team uh, so in addition to api manager product development related work i contribute to some open source projects as well so open api generator some apache projects are, are something i contribute and also i uh, do a little bit writing on uh, api management and integration domain as well so you can uh, find my uh, linkedin twitter links here so i'll share these slides uh, after the session so without uh, further delay uh, let me jump into today's agenda uh so uh, this is uh, my agenda for today's talk so first i will discuss about the term innovate or die uh, then uh, i will discuss about the consumer behavior because to do any sort of innovation it's very important to have clear idea about uh, consumer behavior we should know how our consumers are behave uh, what are their usage patterns and that sort of things to uh, do right innovation uh, for them so then uh, almost all the innovations are powered by the uh, fueled by the revenue so uh, we will need to focus on that as well so on the api revenue i will discuss about the different revenue models uh, that you can use to accelerate your uh, innovation and the api driven innovation so then uh, i will discuss about the uh, uh, apis and integrations as digital product so uh, something similar to physical products these days uh, we are like a uh, having a lot of uh, digital products so uh, i will discuss how you can uh, promote apis and integrations as a digital products and generate revenue out of that so then uh, when you do any sort of innovation and when you take that to market uh, acceleration uh, market acceleration and growth acceleration so those things something we need to consider and then uh, innovation is not necessarily be to always be uh, something you do from the scratch so you can take existing system and do little bit of modernization and uh, do innovation on top of that so i'll discuss about the application modernization as well so then uh, agility and the innovation always goes together uh, and uh, i'll discuss about the agility with some of the examples our own custom examples how we achieved uh, great agility and uh, do very did very successful innovation uh, with that okay so this is agenda for this session so let's try to uh, discuss about the innovation side a little bit so recently i was uh, reading this article on value.ai and uh, in this article they have discussed about like 50 different examples of uh, uh, the corporations that failed to innovate fast and as a result uh, they lose uh, they lost a significant uh, market share that they had before so if you look at these uh, logos some of them uh, is still doing very well uh, they they still capture their market share and they do operate very well in their domain but if you look at uh, the majority so they were like a great companies like pvs tech and over the time they lost a significant amount of their market share so if i take a few examples like uh, the kodak here and uh, blackberry kind of thing so the kodak i think they introduced first uh, consumer digital camera in 1975 but they were failed to uh, go to market with that properly uh, with that innovation so same story with the blackberry and some other vendors as well so i think here the important fact is if you are not innovative enough then uh, you will be captured by your other competitors and the other vendors in the same domain uh, because uh, the because of the lack of innovation so then uh, in this slide you see uh one of the article written by myself so in 2009 uh, i was working as intern software engineer uh, while doing my degree uh so the first assignment i got was to do uh, some some analysis on worldwide the smartphone usage so then uh, i did my research and i refer some articles and uh, then came up with this table so interestingly as you can see here uh in 2008 2009 range 
uh, the Nokia was capturing like a forty-one percent of the total smartphone market share. Next year it was like a forty-five. So these stats for two thousand eight and two thousand nine. And uh, then here research in motion means BlackBerry. So uh, so probably you won't hear their name uh, today's smartphone market. So they were holding nineteen percent, nine and thirteen point five. And uh, Apple, you can see ten percent and five point three. Uh, so there. So this article published on two thousand nine October. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, after just after twelve years, uh, you can see some of these brands are not even appear in the smartphone industry. And if you take organizations like Nokia, they lost a significant amount of the market share. And uh, most of the time, uh, these are considered as uh, uh, good examples. About innovation and uh, what happen if you are not innovative enough. So okay, that's the uh, the sad side of the story and the people who uh, lost their market share due to uh, lack of innovation. And on the other other hand, uh, if you see these logos, Google, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, and the Netflix kind of organizations, so they are very famous for the uh, they are rapid innovation and uh, they are. So, if we take today like a top ten, top twenty most innovative organizations, uh, these uh, logos are among them, and uh, they have very agile process uh, to accelerate the innovation. So, they use a lot of uh, the open source uh, components to accelerate the development, and most of their systems are interconnected through properly defined APIs. So, all their API products are very well documented and very easy to integrate. So, these are the Uh, some of the reasons uh, behind this uh, fast innovation. So I think you all get a very clear idea about the being innovative and uh, do innovations fast. So to finish this section, uh, I'd like to take this quote from Charles Darwin. So he said, uh, "It's not the strongest or the uh, most intelligent one survived. So uh, only the uh, ones who." are uh, responsive for the changes are the survive so it's very important to understand this uh, sentence in our world as well so as a digital solution providers so if you are not uh, responsive enough to changes happen around us then uh, it can be problem for us and uh, we will not be able to survive okay so uh, next uh, we will go for uh, consumer behaviors so like i mentioned early It's very important to understand uh, consumer behaviors because uh, almost all the solutions we provide uh, that goes to some sort of consumer, and having a very good idea about uh, them and their need is uh, very important. Okay, so uh, if I discuss about understanding consumer behaviors, uh, I have listed uh, some of the behaviors I noticed. So the first one is uh, most of the consumers are attracted to uh, most innovative solutions. So uh, when we try, when we want to uh, buy some product or buy some service, or even when we open a bank account, uh, we pay attention to this fact. So we we try to go with the most innovative solution out there. So for example, if you are to select a, a banking vendor for your personalized personal banking uh, requirements. then uh, most of the time you see uh, whether they have very good uh, mobile banking capabilities uh, whether they are like uh, having proper security measurements in place and uh, they are either they are smart enough to detect some abnormal transactions and acknowledge them to you so uh, likewise innovation plays a key role here uh, when we select vendor and also today consumers uh, most of them prefer personalized experience so they don't need uh, same service for uh, any other person get so they need some sort of a personalized experience that exactly match uh, their requirement and their demands so as per the recent uh, research it was mentioned like nearly 65% of the modern users are expecting some sort of personalized experience when they buy a digital product and also researchers uh, researchers found out that Uh, modern consumers are evaluating uh, few vendors before they make uh, buying decisions. So, with the today market competition and uh, the situation of the current market, so if we take any of service, any of the services, so it can be banking, finance, insurance, or the healthcare, 
anything like that you can easily find three four vendors providing exact same service so uh, most of these uh, consumers we have today they usually evaluate three four vendors before they make uh, some buying decision so it's very important uh, it's not just uh, like they come to you and select you so they always go to uh, different vendors and do careful uh, evaluation so you have to be uh, smart enough to understand that fact and uh, uh, win this uh, the evaluation criteria and then uh, if consumers are offer with free trial uh, after getting four or five issues they will give up so so most of the today saas solutions and uh, the software solutions online software solutions they offer like a few trials to people to try out and uh, you have to be very careful about these trials because people see issues with these trials and uh, most of the time they will give up and uh, they won't come back again and uh, modern consumers are expect us to know uh, uh, us to know uh, and have would understand about what they really need so basically they want us to have some idea about their requirement before they come and tell us uh, what they really need uh, okay so then uh, i would like to highlight this quote from henry ford uh, i'm not sure whether he really told this or not but uh, once uh, it was mentioned he said uh, if i had asked people what they really wanted they would have said faster horses so sometimes our con consumers uh, don't really know what exactly they need uh, they have some demand and as innovators and as a digital uh, product designers we have to understand their demand what exactly they need and uh, provide some smart solution to cater their demand so uh, if you look at uh, that time the this uh, the 90s l 90s so uh, at that time uh, people were struggling to like carry more weight Uh, like uh, uh, like uh, ride more fast so at that time uh, so if you ask something like that they will definitely say something like this but we have to understand the uh, their exact requirement and uh, come up with the innovative solution so uh, when you when you do innovations just uh, focus on these matters uh, and uh, uh, like try to be more productive more innovative uh, with this uh, understanding about your consumers so then uh, let's see how we can do digital innovation with apis and how apis accelerate uh, digital innovation so uh, so to, if we look at today technology uh, market apis are almost everywhere so in akamai recent akamai report it was mentioned that uh, nearly 83% of the traffic uh, are for the api and uh, this report released on 2019 and uh, 2021 i'm sure uh, this number will increase further and uh, we are getting more and more api traffic uh, for uh, almost all the applications that we are using and uh, when we do uh, innovations uh, let's see how apis and integrations can help us so i have listed some of the points here i'll uh, go through them one by one so first one is uh, when you do new innovation to when you do innovation uh, you can integrate different services and data to uh, do innovation so unlike early days uh, you don't have to write everything from the scratch so for example if you are to develop with the application and uh, do some innovation around uh, with the uh, you don't have to write uh, geolocation api you don't have to write uh, weather information api so you can simply use existing services and data and uh, you can consume that as api and on top of that you can add uh, your business logic and uh, do innovation so uh, that way apis and integrations help users to integrate existing services and uh, provide some valuable service some business functionality on top of existing services and api and then uh, if you are using apis and integrations you can accelerate Uh, go to market type by reusing apis and services so if i go back to previous example uh, you can reuse some of the already available apis and services and through that you can save a lot of time and as a result of that you can accelerate uh, go to market type and also uh, when you develop some service some meaningful service then you can use that as a marketing channel or lead generation source 
so for example if you are like if i discuss again uh, previous discuss uh, with the example so let's say you have some meaningful uh, api uh, that that help to uh, do something related to weather information then you can use that api as a marketing channel you can expose this to outside and let people to consume it and have some feedback cycle and on top of that you can introduce more and more services and more products and uh, use that as a lead generation source and uh, if you are already in the business uh, you can use these uh, integrations and apis to acquire new customers so for example if you if you did some innovation and uh, you already have some uh, customer base uh, you can push that chain to them and see how they accept that and through that you can acquire new customers and users and also it helps you to uh, expand your businesses with the partners and resellers because uh, like if you are offering some solution and at any point uh, if you can expose these services to partners and let them to build solutions on top of that and let your resellers to sell sell your services uh, through apis uh, that will expand your business and also when you have uh, apis and integrations as innovations uh, you can uh, with the help of uh, proper api management system you can build some audience and the ecosystem around your products and uh, have great feedback cycle and the ecosystem around your uh, digital products and also this help you to extend your products and services to uh, new domains so if you look at uh, the traditional organization without uh, proper api and integration practice so uh, most probably they will have business services and the uh, the uh, data so it can be data application and services with microservices and they can have message brokers and event sources and uh, there can be proprietary and log systems that they use internally so there can be different services and these uh, different services use different protocols uh, sometimes they are like a uh, uh, secured with different methodologies and uh, it can be very hard to uh, explore them for uh, external users or developers to uh, consume them and implement something meaningful so to cater that uh, we can introduce api and integration layer uh, in between your consumers or digital channels and your real data so uh, by adding this layer uh, you can have like a api layer and the integration layer so integration layer will take care about the uh, communication protocol bridging uh, the like uh, integration across different services part uh, and at the same time uh, apis will take care about uh, the exposing these services to outside in a desired protocol with uh, additional quality of services so that way it makes very easy to uh, people to consume these services and uh, get uh, real uh, value out of these services and data so that will help you to uh, expose your data to outside in a very friendly way and also at the same time it helps developers to uh, the accelerate uh, their development and uh, developing their applications uh, by consuming your internal data okay so then uh, if you look at uh, the software innovation cycle so if he discuss about the software innovation uh, cycle so it's having uh, these different phases and uh, as you can see here uh, this implementation testing deployment maintenance all these phases you can uh, the accelerate with the uh, the use of integrations and api so for example if i discuss about the implementation side uh, you can save a lot more time by introducing integrations and api so you don't have to write these services from the scratch uh, you can simply use a few existing services and speed up the implementation and when it comes to testing also if you have proper apis in place uh, with the uh, api uh, definition uh, you can use them to do the api driven testing so you can save a lot more time and uh, uh, the development and the deployment is also very easy if you are using a proper api management channel so a building ecosystem is something we discussed early having feedback cycle so all these things you can do easily with apis and proper api management system so then i'll discuss about the api revenue uh, because uh, to i mean to have success in any of the system uh, we need to have some sort of revenue mechanism without having proper revenue uh, over the time uh, we will lose our interest about this particular solution or the product so uh, it's very important to have proper revenue mechanism uh, 
uh, for your APS and integrations as well. So uh, if you look at uh, today market, so these values, uh, I think uh, these values uh, uh, captured some times back. So it was reported Expedia generate their 95, 90% of the revenue, we pay generate 60%. Uh, sales was generate 50% of their revenue uh, through APIs. And uh, if you look at some so, uh, organizations like Stripe, uh, they generate 100% of revenue uh, through API calls. So it's very important uh, if you are doing innovation and if you are trying to uh, innovate and uh, come up with the APIs as a solution for the digital products that you sell outside, uh, it's very important to have uh, integrate uh, revenue mechanism into API itself. So in 2011 or 12, uh, John Mosha did a very interesting talk about API monetization model. So that video is available in YouTube. Uh, you can have a look at on that. So in his speech, he introduced uh, like uh, 20 different uh, API revenue models. Uh, I'm sure like uh, some of them is still in use, but uh, majority is not used right now. But uh, if you look at these uh, API revenue models, then uh, they're like different methodologies. Some APIs they are for free. Uh, some APIs have mechanisms to uh, developers pay for consumption. And uh, there can be other cases where developers get paid uh, for the API usages. And uh, there can be indirect revenue as well. So basically, uh, you consume API. And uh, when you consume API or when you uh, subscribe to API, there's no direct payment happen. But through the operations we do through API, uh, we will get indirect revenue. So likewise, we can have different revenue models. And it's very important. So when you do innovation, and uh, when you use APIs and uh, your final, is, final product is also API, uh, you have to have very good understand about the API uh, revenue streams. Because so if, you are, if your innovation use uh, some sort of APIs that you need to pay, uh, you have to consider that cost uh, when you price your service as well. So likewise, uh, be mindful about these things and uh, use uh, API revenue capabilities effectively when you do uh, innovations. So then uh, uh, I'll discuss about how you can use APIs and integrations as uh, digital products. So uh, so these days, uh, APIs and the integrations, uh, uh, we treat them as a sellable API products. So it will usually go through a uh, digital product lifecycle we consider for any of the other digital products. So basically, it start with ideation, then go for the, uh, the prototyping, then we do uh, we go for the growth phase and we release them as a digital product and then we do have a feedback cycle where we do like uh, reiterations uh, modification uh, developments and then again uh, go for the market so likewise uh, uh, we need to follow uh, digital product life cycle for apis as well so uh, i will take uh, one of the example here uh, like uh, so this integration we did uh, a uh, few years back, uh, and uh, at that time, so Dialog Garciata is uh, one of the leading telco provider uh, in this region. So uh, they were they were like trying to introduce a new application uh, innovation platform. So at that time, they had uh, different services, and they wanted to expose these services to outside as a digital products. So in that case, uh, they they took uh, WSO2 API Manager and uh, did certain modification. So uh, one of their developers mentioned that uh, the, our free and open source nature helped them to do a self-evaluation first. And uh, they, they, they took that product, they modified that by themselves, and uh, they were able to uh, take that to market with the API self-care portal. And uh, in that portal, uh, they have converted their services into uh, valuable digital products. So they, they were able to associate different uh, subscription models and uh, then come up with the proper digital product life cycle for their services. So uh, at that time, uh, when, we, when we spoke with them last time, so they are about 2,500 uh, members and they are like uh, 3,000 applications uh, developed on top of this platform and uh, they were using it very well. So this is one of the very good example how you can convert your services and uh, your data uh, into digital products and uh, sell them and let people to consume. So if you're interested in more details, you can go to this case study and see that. 
So then uh, accelerating growth uh, with the API is uh, another thing we need to discuss. So then again, I will take one of, one of the example. So Contas is a uh, famous airline operating in Australian region. So in their, pro in their case, the problem was uh, they, so they were using some uh, legacy technologies at that time. Uh, they had a very clear vision where they need to go. And uh, there were some obstacles with the, uh, the technology stacks uh, that they were using. So we had discussions with them and uh, we deployed WC2 API Manager. And uh, with that, we were able to deploy a modern API management system. And uh, with that, uh, they were able to uh, de accelerate their growth. And uh, as a result of that, uh, within the first year of the deployment, they were able to get uh, 10 times growth in published APIs. And also they were able to uh, observe 500% uh, traffic growth and uh, they were able to uh, the reduce the pops by half uh, by adding uh, this API. So as you can see here, uh, you can see when you introduce API and the proper API management system, uh, you can accelerate the growth. So basically you reduce the go-to-market time and uh, give some more agility and the more power to uh, your development teams to uh, accelerate the growth. So then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the innovation uh, does not mean uh, you always do something from the scratch. So innovation can be like uh, modernizing your existing systems. So most of the time you see in the banking domain, uh, we do have different data and the systems. So uh, sometimes we can use these existing systems and data and uh, do some uh, modification and provide them as a new, uh, better new uh, solution. So this is not really uh, like a complete new innovation. Uh, we can treat that as a uh, modernization to uh, existing applications. So through the modernizations, we can do uh, business disruption and uh, we can attract new customers and the developers and we can uh, access legacy systems and the modern systems at the same time uh, uh, and provide a better experience. And also we can increase the consumption and uh, while manage the security and quality of services. And also if you have a proper API management solution, then you can measure the adaption and see usage patterns uh, when you do the modernization. So whether your modernization is successful or not. So in this case also, I would like to highlight uh, one example. So Micron technology. So uh, we are like, they are like uh, well leading uh, uh, semiconductor manufacturers. So in their case, they had uh, different uh, monolithic, uh, monolithic servers and they want to have uh, the, some sort of application modernization. And in that case, we had discussion, we deployed WC2 API manager there. And then uh, we were able to uh, have like, a, uh, they had some existing uh, services and uh, we were able to modernize them and expose these things as a, a REST, REST APIs to outside with uh, desired quality of services. And from there onward, they said uh, they want to provide solution that make easy to integrate, design, develop, and uh, manage uh, their new web services. So this is again another successful case study. Uh, you can go to this link and uh, see more details. So then I'll discuss about the agility. So uh, when I discuss about the agility, uh, the proximacy is another great example. So in this case, uh, they are like uh, one of the largest telco provider operating in Belgium region. So they know they knew about API. So they have very good API practices. Uh, they know about APIs. They know what exactly APIs does, uh, what integrations does. But in their case, the main problem is this whole process is not uh, was not agile enough. So so they had to rethink uh, what they were doing and uh, uh, try to do something to uh, make this process uh, more agile. So in this case also. Uh, uh, we deployed WS2 API Manager, and uh, through that, we were able to uh, convert uh, these uh, APIs to modern APIs. And uh, as a result of that, APIs become more lightweight, more powerful. And uh, we associated uh, API life cycles. Through that, it was very easy for them to manage this uh, uh, API life cycle. And product teams are empowered with and, uh, APIs uh, because this uh, agility. And uh, the collaboration between different teams were play, also played a very big role. So they, they learn how to collaborate with different teams, how to reach uh, APIs uh, across different departments uh, and uh, implement a common solution. So from there onward, 
uh, it was mentioned that uh, they use WSO to do uh, what we do best and they focus on the business side of the things while we take care about uh, their API management problems uh, for them. Uh, 